In this video, we're going to be taking our data and our spectra from our low resolution HNMR from the previous video. And we are going to be looking at high resolution NMR. So high resolution NMR uses higher radio frequencies than those used in low resolution HNMR and provides a more detailed spectra. So what I've done here is I have just done almost like a little screenshot um, of the chemical shift up to six and I've plotted that again and just replicated the exact same spectra as the low resolution HNMR. So we're going to use this low resolution as our backbone and then we're going to add the splitting onto this diagram. Now you remember from the previous video I was talking about these being houses and you having to look at your next door neighbours. And that's what we do for the chemical splitting when we're doing our high resolution HNMR. There's a little rule which is N plus 1 for your splitting. And the way I remember it is N stands for neighbour, how many hydrogens live in your neighbour's house. And then you add the plus one. So if I'm looking at the pink house, it's only got one neighbour, which is the greenhouse. Now, how many hydrogens live in the greenhouse? We've got two. So using our colour pens, we're going to write two. It only has one neighbour. So we'd write two plus one, which gives me a splitting of three for my pink house. So what I want to do is go to my pink house. I can see that it's already plotted at one. And it's an odd number. So what I'm going to do is draw little lines on either side to show that splitting in two, three. The next focus is my greenhouse. What I can see here is my greenhouse has two neighbours. We can see on either side. In the pink house, I have three hydrogens. Its next door neighbour is the blue house. And in the blue house, it can hold two hydrogens. And that is my neighbour, Z plus one, which would give me a total of Three plus two is five, plus one is six, which means that the greenhouse split should split into six. As that's an even number, we want to draw a second line the same height, and then we want to do symmetry on either side and bring it down into a split of six. Next focus is the blue house. So the blue house has the greenhouse as its next door neighbour. There are two hydrogens that live inside the greenhouse. Plus, it's next to this highly electronegative element, which is the oxygen. Now, because the oxygen is so highly electronegative, it actually masks the hydrogen that it's bonded to. So this blue house doesn't actually think that there is a hydrogen atom in the dungeon, right? And that's because of the oxygen. So we always want to write O. The way I remember it is O is uh, zero, which is for oxygen. And then we do our plus one rule. So two plus zero is two, plus one is equal to three, which means in the blue house, our splitting for our uh, high resolution HNMR should split into three. We then go on to do our hydroxyl group. And it's got a next door neighbour, which is here. But remember that oxygen's a highly electronegative element. So it means that this hydrogen can't feel or see the uh, hydrogens in its next door neighbour house. So in the blue pen, we're going to write zero. Even though it does have a neighbour, it doesn't see them, that can't feel them. Plus, we're going to have one for our N plus one rule, which means our purple house or dungeon should only have a split of one, which is this one here. So what we can see is that we have four individual proton environments from our low resolution. We've identified the chemical shift using the data booklet. We've done the height proportional to the number of hydrogen atoms which are found in that environment. And we use the N plus one rule, which is your neighbour or neighbours plus one rule to identify the splitting which would be found in the high resolution HNMR for propan 1 -O. Now we're going to do the exact same for propan 2 -O. So I'm going to be looking at my pink house. So I'm looking at this carbon. This carbon only has one next door neighbour, which is my greenhouse. And there is one hydrogen that lives inside there. And I'm going to do my plus one rule. One plus one is equal to two. So that means that my pink environment, which has got a height of six, remember it's because we've got two environments which are the same. And we're going to split that into two. It's a doublet. If I'm focusing on the greenhouse, I want to see who is its next door neighbour. And what I can see is I've got a next door neighbour here. There are three hydrogens inside that house. 
plus there is another pink house on the other side which is three hydrogens plus I have the oxygen but remember the oxygen is highly electronegative so it masks the hydrogen that's here so in my purple house I'm going to say that there are zero hydrogens because that proton can't feel it and we'll write plus one which means my greenhouse, I would have three plus three, which is six, plus one, which is seven. I'd have a split of seven. That's an odd number. So we want to do three, five, seven. And I have my hydroxyl group, which I'm looking at. That hydrogen is bonded to the greenhouse. But remember, the oxygen is highly electronegative, so it doesn't feel any of the protons in the next door neighbor environment. Plus, I'm going to add 1. 0 plus 1 is equal to 1, which means I keep it as it is, as it only has one singlet. It produces one line. So again, to reiterate, propan uh, 2 all has 1, 2, 3 proton environments. We use the low-resolution HNMR using the data booklet to identify the chemical shifts. And the heights of those peaks are proportional to the number of hydrogens that are found inside there. We then look at the high-resolution HNMR using the, the rule N plus 1, which I call neighbour or neighbours plus 1. And that allows us to identify the splitting, which will be found in the high-resolution HNMR for propan 2 all.